Hi everybody, my name is Daniel Kerkmeijer, one of the System Application Engineers at NXP Voice and Audio Solutions. Today I will show you how to use our TFA 9894 Smart Amplifier Development Kit. The kit can be ordered via our sales agents and comes with the following items. The TFA 9894 Translation Board, mounted on an MK2 Development Board. A micro USB cable, which is needed to control the device and optional to play audio and two speakers and a 5 volt power supply. The 5 volt power supply is needed to activate the DC-DC booster. I will explain more about the boards in the next part. Before getting started, there are a few key things you will need to be able to identify. Mounted on the development board is a stereo translation board containing two TFA9894 with all the components needed. The TFA 9894 is a 10-volt boosted amplifier with NXP speaker boost and protection algorithm inside. It can deliver up to 5.6 average output power in an 8-ohm load. Other features are a very low noise output signal and a very high output power efficiency. The allowed load can be between 3.2 and 38.4 ohms. The other components visible are the DC-DC booster coil and a few capacitors. Let's have a look to the main board. The board can be used with different amplifiers and contains many connections. First, as you will see here, is a DC in for the power adapter. It's also possible to connect an external supply if needed via X151. There are two speaker connectors and micro USB connector, which can be used to control the smart amplifier and optional play and record audio function, both enabled via Windows. Audio can also be played and recorded via TDM in-out, SPDIF in-out or analog in. There are also switches on the board. The S2 selects the source from the amplifier to be recorded with SPDIF and S4 does do the same, but for USB instead. S6 is an important switch turning off the TDM coming from the USB, allowing to use one of the other audio sources like SPDIF or analog signal. You will also see that there are two reset buttons mounted. S1 is to reset the smart amplifier and S5 is to reset the microcontroller, an LPC from NXP. LED indicators are available to show the board status and settings. LED 3 shows if PCK is enabled. LED 2 shows if there is audio playback or recording active. LED 1 shows if 32FS is active and LED 0 shows the heartbeat proving system is active and toggles faster when there is I2C communication with the amplifier. The three supply LEDs glow if needed voltages are available and the last three LEDs show the detected audio source. Last thing I would like to discuss before connecting the board is the dip switch S3. It's used to set behaviors when using USB audio. I2S clocks are always running when switch 2 is on and disabled when set to off, which is when there is no audio. 64FS audio format is selected when switch S3 is set to on and 32FS when set to off. The last switch S4 can be set to off when there should never be a clock. Don't forget that you have to reset the microcontroller to make the settings valid after changing them. Now we have reviewed the board itself Let's go over to set it all up. Here I will be demonstrating the steps to set up the board for playing audio via USB. I first have checked if switch S6 has been set to on and verified the dip switch settings S3 are all set to on. Then I connect the USB cable and power adapter. Windows will detect the new hardware. The first thing to do is to select the development kit as sound card which can be done by selecting speakers, NXP Maximus Audio as default device. Then go to Properties, Advanced to select the correct sample rate. Do the same for the recording device and set up the same sample rate. Please be aware that audio needs to be played before changes take effect. From here you are now ready to use Smart Studio. This is NXP's GUI to control and tune NXP smart amplifiers. There are more videos available on NXP.com to help you further with using this tool. You can load the project corresponding to the device connected after installing Smart Studio. 
In this case, we are using the TFA9894. There are different INI files. Select the INI file matching the FS settings used on the board. In this case, 64FS and press apply the loaded settings. The device will ask if it's needed to calibrate to pair the speaker with the amplifier if it's not calibrated yet. The system is ready to play music after calibration is done. To get more details about speaker temperature and excursion, you can check the status in the live data section. And that's pretty much it. We hope this video gave you some insights as to how to properly set up and use NXP Smart Amplify Development Kit. For more information or to get started with our kit, go to nxp.com. Thanks for watching.